Don't you have a responsibility to tell them the truth, sir? It's happened again. Parents kept in the dark. I think parents should have been told exactly what had happened. First, the Cherry Creek School District waited more than 100 days to tell parents a high school security guard was arrested for sexual contact with a student. Why did you choose to keep parents in the dark? Then the principal of Douglas County High School waited nearly a week to tell parents his friend, who worked in his school as a teacher and softball coach, was arrested for sexual exploitation of a student. Parents need to know what is happening immediately. Tonight, Denver 7 Investigates has uncovered a new example of schools and school districts keeping parents in the dark. Once again, it's a Douglas County school, this time Highlands Ranch High School. Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski is back tonight. Tony, this one started with a canine drug search. Exactly, Shannon and Ann. And 24 hours after driving the car of one of his star athletes off campus in the middle of that drug search, Mark Robinson unexpectedly resigned. He was the school's dean of students and head football coach. Tonight, for you, again we ask why parents were kept in the dark. Let the drama unfold. You're listening to a sheriff's deputy on video from a dash camera. Right now, I'm worried about the coach. Obtained exclusively by Denver 7. There's one car. His star football player. This is moments after the campus canine drug search at Highlands Ranch High. Reports state Coach Mark Robinson drove the SUV of one of his football players a couple hundred yards off campus. Deputies located it, parked in front of the coach's home. And moves it to try and keep him out of trouble. Well, guess what? That's great. Kept him out of trouble. But guess who's in trouble now? Watch closely as Koa, a drug sniffing dog, walks around the SUV two times. Koa hits on it, then you can smell the weed in it. Now watch Koa sit back on his hind legs, alerting deputies he detected a drug scent. Suspicious? I, I would say that's suspicious, and so did the officers that saw it. Douglas County Sheriff Tony Spurlock says after Koa picked up that drug scent, his deputies alerted school leadership and opened a criminal investigation. Clearly, the coach, uh, in our opinion, acted inappropriately. And there are also questions about how school and district administrators responded after learning those facts. Coach Robinson drove the car from campus on August 24th. He resigned the next day. Teachers and athletes were simply told he took another job. On August 28th, in a parent bulletin, Coach Robinson informed parents he had resigned, saying in the past year, quote, I was slipping in my duties as a head coach. No mention of an active sheriff's investigation. His resignation came one week before his team's first game. And the trail of deception by school administrators continued. Three days after the resignation, Highlands Ranch Athletic Director Preston Davis explained Coach Robinson's resignation to the state's high school athletic association by saying it was a career opportunity with a lifelong friend that he just couldn't pass up. Again, no mention of the sheriff's investigation. Tony Kovaleski from Channel 7. As you know, we've been trying to talk with you. We wanted to ask the athletic director why he neglected to mention that sheriff's investigation that started a day before the resignation. Don't you think parents have a right to know when Coach Robinson resigns in the middle of a law enforcement investigation? Don't you have a responsibility to tell them the truth, sir? Busy right now. We Preston Davis turned down multiple requests to explain his decisions. What about leading athletes? You didn't tell them the truth. You didn't tell Chasta the truth. Don't you? Don't you have a responsibility, sir? Why are you avoiding us? Did Coach Robinson embarrass this high school in this football program? I think Coach Robinson uh, made a mistake. Originally, Principal Chris Page also declined our request to explain his decisions. Why did you ultimately decide to sit in front of our camera? Um, I want to make sure that uh, we put out information at the, at the appropriate time. Just before the school's second football game and nearly two weeks after the coach moved his player's SUV, Principal Page sent this letter to families. As you likely know, there was an incident involving law enforcement on August 24th. I guess the principal has no idea what's going on. And he just got a little tidbit about it. And the principal's like, are you 
kidding me? It was the third different explanation for Coach Robinson's departure, the first to include the truth about the sheriff's investigation. It came 12 days later and followed multiple media reports. Could you, should you have told parents that this coach resigned in the middle of a sheriff's investigation? I believe it was appropriate for us to share the information that we did at the time that we did. Did the school communicate the entire truth to parents and the community? As it became clear that, that more information um, was needed by those parents, he released more information. That's how Douglas County School District's interim superintendent explains three different stories and nearly two weeks before parents were told the real truth. Parents and athletes weren't given the entire truth. You're the superintendent. Does that bother you? They have the entire truth. They weren't given they it originally. They absolutely have the entire truth. Now. So in the end, you have a coach with a resume that now reads former coach. Athletes and parents still trying to understand why it took nearly two weeks for the truth to come out. And school district leadership that supports decisions to essentially keep secrets from parents. What message are you sending to these athletes and their parents when you don't tell the entire story of why that coach is no longer there. I think that if you're going to run a program and you're going to run a program honestly, you should tell the, the folks this is what happened. Clearly, the sheriff and the superintendent have different opinions on public transparency. Sheriff Spurlock says if the sheriff's office could have developed probable cause, they would have asked the DA to file charges for obstructing government operations. So criminal charges were considered, but not filed. And finally for you, here's our commitment. We will keep telling these stories until schools and school districts become transparent, telling students and parents the truth when it happens. Well, they certainly want to know, that's for sure. All right. We'll Thank you, Tony. It.